Hello, uh, we're here with Carrie Grant, who is running for Seattle City Council position number nine. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Yes, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Claire Grant. Um, I'm running for Seattle City Council position nine, which is a citywide position. Um, I am a Washington native and I've lived in Seattle since 2016, which is when I transferred into Seattle University to finish my bachelor's degree. Um, and I currently attend George Washington University remotely, of course, um, where I am working on my master's in public health. Um, I'm using my education at the George Washington University to inform my policy, uh, my policy making, especially as it pertains to housing, transit, and climate justice for the people of Seattle, as well as workers' rights and safety. As of yesterday, I am 26 years old, and if I was elected, I would be the youngest council member on record. Great, thank you. Um, so now we'll move into our questions and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it into the um, chat box so that you can follow along as Jeff asked the first one. Great, hi Claire. So what specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle, both in the short term and the long term? Please address land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, the role of police and justice system. Oh boy, okay, um, this is definitely something that is very much in the public health realm. Um, and one of the main reasons that I am running, um, we have discovered that we can use FEMA reimbursement for immediate housing, but ultimately we need to have housing first policies in place. Um, we can address these through, again, the use of hotels and getting FEMA reimbursement for those, um, as well as adjusting zoning laws, which I um, actually will be publishing on my website later this week um, in regards to ending a lot of single family zoning, especially in transit dense areas, um, putting higher requirements on, um, on affordable housing units in multifamily homes. Um, and then of course using, um, I do support defunding the police and using some of the um, revenue from that um, to invest in social services that would better serve the people of Seattle, especially in terms of housing needs um, and other social services like behavior and mental health care. Um, and using social workers and other community health workers to help people navigate housing resources. Um, but ultimately housing needs to be first um, in, terms of, in terms of allowing people who use drugs and have substance abuse disorders to get housing, um, even if they are active in their addiction and allowing people who um, have animals and animal companions to find housing too. Both of these are major barriers to housing. Um, and a lot of people who are listed as rejecting services um, when sweeps occur um, are actually not able to access these services. Um, and we also need to be investing in more LGBT friendly housing as um, a lot of uh, discriminatory practices happen in housing, especially uh, for transgender people as well. Um, so ultimately, uh, less single family housing, more at least mid rise and um, low rise floor housing. Thank that's you so much. Time. Sorry, I forgot to give you a 30 second warning. That's my bad. No, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and place question two into the chat. And Mary Kylie, this one is for you. Yes. Okay. So, what is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring affordable housing? How would you work to dismantle systems? systemic race, racist arrangements as in redlining, including but not limited to exclusionary zoning and land use policies, do you support and would you sponsor city legislation to end single family zoning as Berkeley, California recently did? Yeah, absolutely. And I do think that this is something that we don't have to do drastically immediately, but we can start to phase out um, primarily by ending it first um, within a 10 minute walk of all either um, existing or planned light rail stations, as well as major tra transit areas and commercial zoning. Um, this would allow more housing to be built in these, in these neighborhoods, essentially creating um, more of the 15 minute neighborhood opportunities um, that is often talked about. Uh, in public health, we recognize that the most walkable cities are also the most healthy cities. Um, and so really going into that with our zoning reform, 
um, and understanding that people need access to resources that are close to them and shouldn't have to take the bus for 20 minutes just to get to a grocery store um, is really important. So there are a couple of small steps we can do before we end citywide single family zoning if we choose to do that. Um, I'm absolutely all for just ending it right away if that's politically feasible. Um, but again, we need to recognize that political feasibility accounts for a lot of policy uh, policy making, and we want to make sure that um, we're at least headed in the right direction as soon as possible because people need housing now. Um, but yeah, um, I would um, I would first start by making more um, housing units accessible by transit. Um, improving transit options and especially improving um, the the options for grocery stores, um, either by making grocery stores not commercial. Seconds. Thank you so much. Making commercial uh, not commercial zoned, so they're allowed to exist in low rise residential buildings, or um, just adjusting the poly the zoning areas so that more grocery stores can exist in residential neighborhoods and people can walk to the things that they need. Great, thank you. Thanks. All right, someone please state their question into the chat box. And Sherry, would you take this one? Sure. Um, first of all, happy birthday. <laughs> would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? You already told us. And if so, by approximately what percentage? What is your plan for the city's SPOG negotiations? Do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Yeah, so actually 50% of the reason that I am running is because um, I was a Black Lives Matter protester last summer. Um, and that was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. Um, my sister had also attended and I wasn't able to um, find her in the crowd because we attended separately. And for several hours, I didn't know where she was. Um, and I didn't know if she was okay. And the people of the city can't be terrified by the police like that. That's not acceptable. Um, so I do support defunding the police at least 50% immediately. And then working towards alternative safety measures that are by non um, that are by non-weaponized officials um, rather than the weaponized police um, that we have now, um, because it's just not really, it's not <laughs> helping people. Um, the police don't, prevent crime, they respond to crime. Um, and we can see that in the past few years, we've had pretty significant increase to our police budget and crime has continued to rise. So we actually need to be funding uh, behavioral and mental health care and um, affordable housing and proper nutrition programs that will actually address people's needs. Um, and that would be what would lower crime. Um, I do support and advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement. There is absolutely no reason that um, any law enforcement officer should be exempt from the law. Um, and that's also just not keeping us safe right now. Um, we also know that we have at least six police members that are, that participated in the insurrection and there hasn't been any, um, any consequences for these people and they're still able to hold their jobs. Um, at least one of them was likely demoted, but, um, they, we can't trust them to keep us safe at this time. We need better alternatives that are again, non-weaponized and actually getting people the services they need. Thank you. And placing question number four into the chat and I have Nicole. Yeah, so how will you prioritize um, transportation infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles, and cars? Which do you view as the most important to prioritize funds for? Um, I think absolutely public transit is the most um, necessary to prioritize just because it's much more accessible. Not everybody can ride a bike. Um, I, and not everybody can walk to where they need to go. A lot of people rely on mobility aids, so transit needs to be closer to them. Um, again, adjusting zoning laws so there's more affordable housing for low-income people near transit lines is a big priority for me. Um, and then also, um, excuse me, I am a cyclist and I didn't learn how to ride a bike until I moved to Seattle and I lived in North Seattle for a long time. Um, and the difference between North and North and South Seattle in terms of cyclist safety is pretty significant. So I definitely want to prioritize um, letting people ride their bikes more in South Seattle and having safer bike lanes that are separated from traffic in order to uh, keep people safe, um, whether it be detached from the road completely 
or have uh, concrete barriers or something so that cars can't enter bike lanes at all is really important to me. Um, we have unfortunately already lost a cyclist in Seward Park very recently. Um, and that really shows that we need a lot more safety, progr uh, safety programs in place for cyclists as well. Um, and cycling is one of the best climate options. Um, it's actually more efficient than public transit. But as I said, we need to be prioritizing public transit for people um, who are not able to cycle or walk to where they need to go. Um, and so I would not- 30 seconds. <laughs> one of the things that I would make sure to not do is um, deep deprioritize uh, cyclist safety and our mission for vision zero in order to build more highways and things like that I would be building bike lanes instead. Great. Thank you. And so now we're going to go ahead and open it up to um, questions from the board. Uh, these are uh, the responses for these are one a minute apiece. And if anybody has a question, I see Mackenzie, you have your hand up. Would you like to go ahead? Sure, thanks. Uh, so question for you. Um, do you believe in universal basic income? And do you have any thoughts or plans on perhaps trying to implement something like that in Seattle, whether it's something as big as like what Andrew Yang had in mind or just something smaller to the, um, the more vulnerable for a smaller scale? And if these are things that you uh, are interested in, what would be your thoughts on how to fund those? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think that it's um, something that would go a long ways. We've seen it work in other places in practice. Um, and again, as somebody with a public health background, looking at programming and seeing what works and helps people is definitely um, a good way to move forward. Um, in terms of funding this, um, we need a better, I would like to work with Washington state legislators for a better tax system, especially with a capital gains tax and things like that. So we could maybe get more revenue for the state of Washington. Um, I see this as something that I would advocate more statewide versus citywide. Um, but I do think that it's a really good idea and has worked and helped a lot of people, um, in other places, especially in the United States. Great. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Uh, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, so you have a public health background um, and the, the city, uh, as you probably know, and the county jointly oversee Seattle King County Public Health. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about that as an agency and how it's been run or how, what other reforms um, you might push on the city council for uh, Seattle King County Public Health. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Of course, housing is absolutely a priority for me. I just really want to get everybody housed. Um, I think that we could really benefit from safe consumption sites as well. Um, these are things that have been proven to decrease um, bloodborne pathogens um, and things like that, um, especially with hepatitis and HIV. Um, so that would be something else that I would um, advocate for. In addition, I would have liked to see more marketing in terms of COVID-19 um, vaccination availability. Um, I saw a lot of it on social media, but social media is not accessible to everyone. I would have liked to see more um, information posted on in different languages on how to get your vaccine for especially for immigrant populations um, and people who don't have social media or access to the internet. Great, thank you. Additional follow-up question? I have one. Uh, this one was actually submitted by one of our members and it says, uh, how would you use your office to address climate dress justice, ensuring a healthy environment and access to climate supporting solutions such as the multimodal clean transportation options for all Washington residents? Yeah, I actually <laughs> just wrote a paper on um, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing because it's funny. Um, it's just a little ironic. I just wrote a paper on the increased um, asthma rates for residents of South Seattle, especially Georgetown, um, due to the, di the diesel fumes from the port and things like that. Um, and so I think what we need to be working with the port more on ter in terms of lowering those emissions and just ending our car dependency um, in the city of Seattle so we don't have these car fumes um, constantly harming our children. Um, the uh, transmissibility and the severity of COVID are increased with uh, transportation related um, emissions and so we really need to be addressing those and I definitely see climate justice as a um, public health necessity and a public health policy. 
Thank you. Additional follow-up questions? Additional follow-up questions? All right, I have another. Um, another member would like to hear about uh, candidate positions on gun regulations. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm from <laughs> um, I'm from Eastern Washington, and um, w things are different different there politically, um, especially in terms of our desire to own firearms. And so it's definitely been a wake up call. Um, but ultimately, we really, really, really need tighter policies. Nowhere else in the world um, has this lack of policies and has this high of um, I shouldn't so that was sorry that was a mis uh, speaking. Um, countries that have higher gun regulation have less gun violence. Um, and I think we should really take that into account and start implementing tighter gun regulations in the city of Seattle and in this country, hopefully as well. Um, and that is a huge public safety measure that we can take. Um, it's, people shouldn't be terrified to go to school. People shouldn't be terrified to go to the mall or to the movies. That's not fair. And that's um, not freedom, which is a principle of the United States. Um, and we definitely need to be seeing more um, regulation. Great, thank you. Additional uh, follow-up questions. Do you have one? Sure, go right ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what have you done in community prior to running for city council to take action on the issues that you care about? Yeah, um, I have, I actually worked in a nonprofit for just over a year um, that helped mental health support um, for first responders and military and veteran members. Um, I have done a lot of emailing and um, that sort of um, activism to city officials and to um, our state legislators as well, um, and set up constituency meetings to make sure that um, they're aware of our concerns and that they see our um, our needs in the community, um, as well as I am very active in attending protests and exercising my First Amendment right, um, especially in regards to climate justice and police reform. Great, thank you. Any other follow-ups? Um, I have one. Uh, Let's see, uh, how about, could you describe an instance where you faced an ethical dilemma and how you resolved it? Yeah, um, at a previous workplace of mine, I noticed a pretty significant amount of discrimination um, and I had advocated for um, diversity training. I don't think that diversity training is the end all be all, but I think that it can be really helpful in workplace practices. I obviously think that it needs to be met with policy making as well. Um, but I had very strongly advocated directly to the uh, leadership team um, and had also provided resources for them to educate themselves on these issues. Um, and sometimes things work out and sometimes they don't. And unfortunately in this circumstance, um, I chose to leave because um, it just, yeah, it wasn't working out. Um, but I did, I mean, I sent a lot of emails and I re did a lot of research and sent a lot of books and documentaries and other, um, podcasts and things like that for them to educate themselves on, um, in the hopes to make a more inclusive workplace. Great. Thank you. And it looks like we are running close to time. So, uh, would you like to go ahead and give a, a one minute, um, a one minute, uh, oh my gosh, a wrap up. Thank you. Sure, yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I'm 26 years old. I would be the youngest member elected, um, especially with things like climate justice. I really believe that we need to start um, allowing young people to advocate for these issues. Uh, this is our future that we are inheriting for the city. Um, and we wanna make sure that it's the healthiest future that we have po uh, possible. Um, so I would be bringing a public health background to is issues that especially concern young people um, in terms of uh, in terms of climate justice, especially and accessibility to uh, necessary resources for the people of Seattle, um, as well as uh, housing and transit um, justice and equi 
equitability. Um, and thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.